So let's look at something called the Vernum Crypto System. So we should always aspire to perfection, but of course we can't ever achieve it. Or can we? And the rather remarkable thing is that we have a perfect crypto system. The Vernum cipher has perfect secrecy. The cipher was invented by Gilbert Vernum, a Worcester Polytechnic Institute graduate who in 1917 obtained a patent for a secret signaling system. The Vernum cipher works as follows. Let our message be a string of ones and zeros. What we're going to do is we're going to construct an encryption key consisting of an equally long string of ones and zeros, where the ones and zeros are chosen randomly with equal probability, say by flipping a coin. We'll encrypt P in the plain text by adding the key value using what's known as bitwise addition. And that works as follows. 0 plus 0, we're going to be unconventional and say that that's equal to 0. Well, actually, I guess that's normal. Uh, 1 plus 0, we'll say that's 1. 0 plus 1, also 1. And so far, nothing unusual has happened. The reason that this is called bitwise addition comes from when we add 1 plus 1, and we're going to call that result 0. So if you recognize the term, this is also known as addition mod 2. So, for example, let's say we want to encrypt, using a Vernum cipher, 10110010. We'll construct a key by flipping a coin and recording 1 if the coin lands heads and 0 if it lands tails. We'll then add the key to the message using bitwise addition. So we flip our coin and it lands heads. So our key is 1. We'll flip again, and this time we get tails. So our key is 0, and we'll continue to flip the coin, recording a 1 if we get heads, and a 0 if we get tails. Once we've constructed the key, we can make the ciphertext by bitwise addition. So now we'll add the key and the message bitwise to get the ciphertext. Remember, 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 1 plus 0 is 1. And we can continue to add the rest of the message and the key to get the ciphertext. Now, so far this looks like a pretty standard crypto system, and so you might wonder, why is this a perfect crypto system? And the answer comes as follows. Suppose message yes is 1 and no is 0. Also suppose that, oh, I don't know, 80% of the messages sent are yes messages. They're 1s. So Eve intercepts a message. But before she can decrypt it, an intern spills coffee on the message and destroys it. Now, after suitably chastising the intern and cleaning up the mess, Eve still has this problem of trying to figure out what the message is. Because she knows that 80% of the time the message is yes, she guesses that the message is yes, and she has an 80% chance of being correct. In other words, Eve could guess the message even if she didn't have it. But what if she had a different intern? To see how this might work, suppose we intercept 100 messages. Now, under our assumption that message is 0 20% of the time and 1 80% of the time, so of those 100 messages, 20 of them are zeros and 80 of them are 1s. Now, if we're using the Vernum crypto system, then we're either going to encrypt using a 0 or 1 with equal probability. So half the time our key is 0, and the other half the time our key is 1. So now let's consider the possibilities. If the message is 0 and the key is 0, the ciphertext is also going to be 0. And that occurs half the time the message is 0, and since the message is 0 20 times, that means 10 times we'll get ciphertext 0. 
The rest of the time the key will be 1, and so adding message to key gives us ciphertext 1, and that's going to occur 10 times. On the other hand, if the message is 1 and the key is 0, the ciphertext is going to be 1, and that'll occur half the time the message is 1, 40 times. And again, if the message is 1 and the key is also 1, then our ciphertext is going to be 0, and that's going to occur half the time again, another 40. Now, if we put this all together, we see that the ciphertext 0 appears 40 times when the message is 1 and 10 times when the message is 0, so it appears 50 times. And the ciphertext 1 appears 40 times when the message is 1 and 10 times when the message is 0, it also appears 50 times. Now, suppose we intercept the ciphertext 0. If we guess that ciphertext 0 must be message 1, we're going to be correct 40 times out of 50. And that's these 40 times where the ciphertext is 1 and the message is 1. And the thing to notice here is this. If the ciphertext message was destroyed and Eve just guessed that the message was yes, she has an 80% chance of being correct. It, but if she actually has a ciphertext message and guesses that it's yes, she still has an 80% chance of being correct. And what this means is that having or not having the ciphertext made no difference. Her interns can spill coffee anywhere they want to, and it won't make a difference in Eve's ability to decrypt the messages. Now, in case it's not clear what just happened, let's say that our key 0 doesn't occur 50% of the time, but say 40% of the time. Then our table would change slightly. So again, 80% of the time, the message is 1. 20% of the time, the message is 0. But now, 40% of the time, the key is 0. And so that means 40% of the time, message 0 is going to be encrypted as ciphertext 0. That's 8 times. And the remaining 12 times, the key will be 1 and the ciphertext will be 1. Meanwhile, 40% of the time, the message 1 and key 0 will give a ciphertext 1. So that's 32 times. And the remaining 48 times our message 1 will be encrypted with key 1, giving a ciphertext 0. And again, suppose we see the ciphertext 0. And we'll get ciphertext 0 8 plus 48 56 times. But of those 56 times, 48 of those times, it corresponds to message 1. So about 48.56, about 86% of the time, it's going to correspond to message m equals 1. So getting the ciphertext makes us more confident that our message is 1. And this means the ciphertext itself conveys some information, and it can't be ignored. And that means the Verdum cipher is a perfect cipher. But if the Verdum cipher is perfect, why isn't it used for everything? And there are two problems. First, the perfection relies on the key being randomly generated. So how do you construct it? And second, the key is as long as the message. So how do you communicate the key securely? And there are two solutions. The Verdum cipher itself is based on what's known as a one-time pad. And so what we'll do is we'll produce an arbitrarily long list of random numbers. We'll send these lists to everyone who needs one, and we'll use each list exactly once. The other approach is to use a formula that generates the key. Since the key must consist of a list of random numbers, the formula must produce random numbers. Except it can't. However, we can hope to produce a formula that makes a sequence of pseudo-random numbers, and we'll take a look at that next.